Street Chicago Harness Racing. Chicago Harness Racing is brought to you by Miller High Life, the best comes shining through. By Everill Chevrolet and Chrysler Plymouth. And by the Illinois Department of Agriculture, supporting harness racing throughout the state. Good evening and welcome to Chicago Harness Racing. We're going to be looking at the racing action from Tuesday night. And it was another thrilling night. You can rest yourself short of that, isn't it? I had a good, I had a good night. Mm -hmm. well, you always get lucky at Maywood. <laughs> Easiest track for me to slogan. handicap. Maybe that's our new slogan. And then we're going to be handicapping tonight, Wednesday, Girls' Night Out, Invitational Handicap for Phillies and Mares. Mm -hmm. Post positions were drawn by groups, and that's easy for me to say. But let's go to the racing action from Tuesday night. Over $800,000 was the total combined handle. That's something to get thrilled about, too. But we did have a fast track. Five-year-olds and under, they're non-winners of 2,000 last six starts. Those are the conditions for the first race. There's a field of eight. There are trotters. And here's the call of track announcer Tony Salvaro. It's American Reliance with the lead. On the outside, it's Witch in the North. Then second, Captain's Glory. Off stride is OJ. Now they're in the final eighth of a mile. Your leader is American Reliance and Captain's Glory. Here they come trotting for home. American Reliance. But here comes Captain's Glory. Captain's Glory on the outside to challenge for the lead. American Reliance, Captain's Glory. On the inside, it's American Reliance, Captain's Glory, and Candace Kay. American Reliance, Captain's Glory, Candace Kay is third. And the victor goes to number four, American Reliance. Walter Paisley in the bar bike, Mark Franzen trains, $11 the winning mutual. Captain's Glory, Mark Separito was second, Candace Kay and Joel Bussey third. 204 and one fifth is the time for the mile trot in the first half of the Daily Double is number four. And the second race, these are Illinois bred fillies, maidens. We had a full field, no changes and a good finish. And there goes Fox Valley Annie. Fox Valley Annie on the outside has a neck in front. It's Sweet Caroline in second. Little Miss Liz in third. Now they're in the final length of a mile. And Fox Valley Annie is under urging with the lead. Here they come turning for home. It's Fox Valley Annie with the lead. It's Sweet Caroline and Little Miss Liz down the stretch. It's Fox Valley Annie with the lead. Little Miss Liz is coming on. Here comes Little Miss Liz. It's Fox Valley Annie. Little Miss Liz on the inside. Sweet Caroline. Three horses at the wire. And in the photo, number five, Fox Valley Annie comes through for us. Randy Jacobs, the driver. John Booten, Shane Trains, the time 203 and 4540 Winnie Mutual. Number six, Little Miss Liz was second. Sweet Caroline B, third. The double of four and five, 4760 of five, six perfecta, $27.20. And that's the daily double from Tuesday at Maywood Park. Stay tuned. We're going to be back with more racing action right after this. A little bit later in the program, we'll have more with Terry Leonard and then Handicapping Wednesday. Welcome back, and we're looking at the racing action from Tuesday night's card at Maywood Park. The third race trifecta conditions are nominers of a race and a lifetime at the basic claiming price of $8,000. We had a field of eight, but one scratch, pure speculation, was a late veterinary scratch due to lameness. So he's out of that race, but still a field of seven. They're moving by eight three quarters, and there goes I told you. I told you no opens up by three lengths, but Lawyer's Freedom moves on to the outside second. Followed on the inside, Bobby Love and Mark Thor. Now they're in the final length of a mile. I told you has the lead by four lengths. Here they come turning for home. It's I told you with the lead. It's Lawyer's Freedom a distance second. Followed now by Mark Four and third. It's I told you under a heavy whip. It's Lawyer's Freedom in second. A late move by Demetrio's Love. It's I told you. Lawyer's Freedom, Demetrio's Brett is third. And it was number one, I told you so. Ole Ensko on the bike, Del Ensko train 620, the winning mutual, and a new lifetime mark, 202 and one fifth. Lawyer's Freedom and Scott Robbins second, Demetrios, Brett, and Stan Taco third. Perfecta one and two, nineteen dollars one two three in the try, $107.40. The fourth race, Phillies and Mares that are now winners at $7,500. Last six or now winners of five races in a lifetime. Seven horses, Tony will bring them home. They're moving by the three quarter mile mark. 
Wild and Gay has the lead two lengths. It's Slurpee in second. On the outside, that's J.G. Glory. On the inside, Costly's Cousin wants racing room. Here comes Gentle Jody, three wide. Here they come, turning for home. It's Wild and Gay with the lead. Here comes Slurpee, and she's out for the drive. Wild and Gay. Here comes Slurpee with a rush. It's Slurpee on the outside. Now to take command, it is Slurpee at the wire. Driven by Ryan Marsh and trained by Luke Dalton, Slurpee at four dollars one fifty-eight and three. Our Miller Light long shot, Costly's cousin was second, six forty to place, not too bad. While and Gay was third, two four perfecta, thirty forty. You're always bragging. Well, I had the perfecta. You're always bragging. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth race, there are eight claimers, there are Phillies and mirrors. There's a field of eight. There's no changes, and here's the call. Now they drive into the far turn. It's come on, Patty, a la Burnsome. Third moving second, a la Burnsome with a rush. He's up to challenge and now power on by. On the inside, that's come on, Patty, March victory. Here they come, turning far home. It's a la Burnsome with the lead. It's come on, Patty, in second, followed by March victory. Down the stretch, it's a la Burnsome, opening up the lead now with every stride. It's all a la Burnsome tonight. It's March victory. Come on, Patty is third. And the victory goes to number five, a la Burnsome, with Fred Finn Jr., Sam Bates, trains 1180, the winning mutual. March victory and Dale Heitman second. Come on, Patty and Jeff Croninger third. Two minutes and one-fifth is the time for the mile. 5-1 perfect to 47-40. 5-1-4 in the track, $431 even. And the sixth race, this is an invitational trap. The post position is drawn by groups. $12,000 on the line. Eight riders, Tony's call. Moving out of second, they're halfway home. A minute flat, now they drive into the clubhouse turn. It's Denny to zip with the lead. Indian Tom is on the outside. Second East Ridge Star in third, followed by Midnight Sunrise. It's 4D, it's King's Hope, Docks, Devlin, and Mora Shiola. Now they curve into the back stretch, approaching the final quarter. Your leader is Denny to zip. On the outside, it's Indian Tom, East Ridge Star, but here comes 4D. Now fourth, now three wide, third moving to second. They're driving by the three quarter mile mark. Danny Tuzip has the lead, 4D. He's alongside a challenge in second, East Ridge Star. Docks Devlin is three wide. Here they come, trotting for home between horses. It's 4D with the lead. It's Docks Devlin coming on down the stretch. It's Docks Devlin on the outside now to take command. It's 4D, a late move on the outside by East Ridge Star. It's Docks Devlin with the lead at the wire. And it was Docks Devlin with Dave McGee paying 820. James Eaton trains a two-minute mile. Winning the photo for second was 4D, finishing third East Ridge Star, the 7-6 Perfect, the $124.40. On to the seventh race. The nominators of three races are $9,000 in a lifetime to be claimed for $8,000. Number nine, Bronze Pride was sick, had to be scratched out of that race, but still a competitive field of eight. But Paragon LaRue now flies up on the outside, now to challenge and take command. Here comes K's overtime, moving into second, that's Scott's magic in third. Here comes Sunshine Jim. Now they drive into the far turn. It's Paragon LaRue with the lead. It's K's overtime, Sunshine Jim. Here they come, turning for home. It's Paragon LaRue with the lead. K's overtime is out for the drive. It's Paragon LaRue. It's K's overtime. Here comes Sunshine Jim. It's Paragon LaRue with the lead at the wire. K's overtime, Sunshine Jim is third. And it was number five, Paragon LaRue. Reed Remley, the winning driver and trainer. 820 is the winning mutual. K's overtime and Ron Marsh was second. Sunshine Gem and Gerald Grevin go third. 201 and one is the time for the mile. 58 Perfecta, 4060, 587 on the try, $263. And the feature race, the Melrose Park Series Final brought together best favorite, Bionic Dart, Carolina Collins, Never Miss, Jura Bell, Miss Bestus, Judy's Delight, and Ron Della Hanover. They're off between horses. There goes never miss out for the lead on the inside. Carolina Collins trained to the outside by Judy's Delight. Into the turn they race and never miss. He's on the outside now to take command. It's Carolina Collins, second three lengths, best favorite. In third on the outside, Judy's Delight. Followed in that first turn by Jerry Bell. It's Miss Bestus. Followed by Ronelda Hanover. And trailing to the quarter, it's Bionic Dart. It's a battle up front. 
It's never miss on the inside, and Judy's delight. They're by the quarter, 27 and 3 the quarter. It's never miss with the lead, but Judy's delight. He's on the outside, a challenge in second. Hold on the inside, Carolina Collins in third. It's best favorite. Here comes Miss Bestas, ranging up on the outside. Pull it on the inside of horses by Jerry Bell. It's Ronelda Hanover. It's Bionic Dart on the outside. They're driving by the half, and your leader is never missed their halfway home. 57 and 3, now they drive into the clubhouse turn. Your leader is never miss. On the outside, Judy's Delight is an up and challenging second. Carolina Collins in third. It's Miss Bestas. She's moving up three wide. There goes Ronaldo Hanover. Now they come into the back stretch, approaching the final quarter. It's never miss your leader, Miss Bestas. Now moving second down the outside. Hold it on the inside. It's Carolina Collins on the far outside. On the outside of the rush by Eric Dart. They're driving by the three quarter mile mark. It's never miss with the lead, Miss Bestas. But on the outside, Bionic Dart. Three wide on the inside, it's Carolina Collins. Here comes Ronelda Hanover between horses. Here they come, turning for home. It's never miss with the lead. Miss Bestas is out for the drive. Never miss. Here comes Miss Bestas with a rush. Never miss on the inside. Miss Bestas, another move. Here comes Miss Bestas. Two horses at the wire. And it was our choice. Yeah, that's right, Eleanor, I'm bragging, because I got 980 out of Miss Bestest this time. Laverne, Laverne Hosteller drove. Sam the Mole trains, 158 and 1. Never Miss finished second, and Jared Bell was third. Teddy for third with Ron Nelda Hanover. Ronelda. I got it right that time. Ronelda. Perfect the 5 and 3, 30, 40. Your turn. No, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> okay. Miss Bestest, now you were saying. Go for the third Stay time. Stay with her. Ninth race. Their four-year-olds and under their fillies. They're now winners of two races in a lifetime. Another late veterinary scratch. B.S. is Little Bear's Lane. Out of that race. They're by the three quarter metal mark. And Dom's Dell draws clear again. On the outside, ship she woman is three wide fourth. Now third under the whip. Second on the outside. Around the turn, it's Dom's Dahl and Ship She Woman. Here they come, turning for home. Dom's Dahl is under urging. Now here comes Ruby Bow between horses. It's Dom's Dahl. Here comes Ruby Bow with a rush. Dom's Dahl has the lead. Here comes Ruby Bow. It's Ruby Bow on the outside, and Dom's Dahl. Ruby Bow. Dom's Dahl at the bar. And a long shot winner benefiting from the rail, Ruby Bow. Del Pletcher, the winning driver. Darcy Pletcher, the winning trainer, 1880, the winning mutual. Dom's Dahl and Oliensko was second on account of you, and Jay Girls was third. 204 and one is the time for the mile. 162 trifecta combination, $304.20. And we conclude with the 10th race, $8,000 claimers, nine winners of $1,500. Last five, nine horses, Tony's call. A minute and one into the clubhouse turn they race inclination maintains a one length lead. It's Silver Wolf right there in second. Midnight Eagle in third on the outside. Followed on the inside, it's Marengo Wolf and Steve Skipper. Now they curve into the back stretch, approaching the final quarter. Inclination two lengths. It's Silver Wolf second on the outside. Midnight Eagle in third. It's Marengo Wolf. He needs racing room. It's Steve Skipper's Saki's return and Ardmore Bay. They're by the three-quarter mile mark. It's Inclination with the lead. It's Midnight Eagle, another move. It's Silver Wolf in third. On the inside of horses, Marengo Wolf and Steve Skipper. Here they come, turning for home. Inclination has the lead. Silver Wolf is out for the drive. Down the stretch, Inclination, Silver Wolf. It's Inclination with the lead. It's Inclination under the whip. At the wire, Silver Wolf is second, Marengo Wolf third. And it was inclination in. Ernie Adam in the bike, Bob Farrington trains. The time, two minutes and a tick. A new mark, 660 winning mutual. Silver Wolf on the rail was second. Number nine, Marengo Wolf was third. We have a 5 1 perfect of 2280, 519 try, 150 80, and a 1 5 daily double, $97. Things are getting pretty sad when you can handicap. Now, I'm going to 1500 last I, five. I gave you that one. Okay. We still have handicapping to look forward to. Won't that be nice? Yeah, but Mark? first we got something. But first, in we've got more of our conversation with Terry Leonard coming up right after this. Many of you fans probably wonder what is it like to compete against Dave McGee, Randy Jacobs, Walter Paisley, Dale Heitman, and Ron Marsh. Well, we asked Terry Leonard what he thinks of the top drivers in Chicago and the harness racing fans. 
how do you keep yourself up to a level of competition, say, with them, or, or is it, or, or do you even think about that or take that in consideration when you're driving? Well, I think anybody in my situation has to realize that you can't be near as sharp as the top guys because it's simply a, a matter of action and reaction. And, you, and a few years ago when we were racing a stable of 15 to 20 horses and we were racing not necessarily eight, nine heats a night, but we were racing eight or nine heats a week. And uh, at that time, I could uh, feel that I was that sharp or that good. And and as now when we're racing four or five heats a week, three heats a week, during the summer when it's hard to get started, maybe race two heats a week. And uh, if you make a bad move, you dwell on that all week long. It's like, I should have been out, I should have been in, I should have left, I should have sat. Uh, when you race every night, a couple, three, four heats a night, it's, it's it's history. You don't worry about if you did something wrong or whatever. So it is really tough to compete with those guys uh, when they do drive that much. And anybody that says it's not, that they can go in there and be as sharp as, as one of the guys that races all that much is, uh, I think, fooling himself. But on the other hand, I do feel we do have some uh, bonuses out here because... My brother and myself, we do work with these horses every day, and we do train them every day. And and uh, so we know if that horse is sharp, or if he got a bad trip last week, or if he's a little bit off or a little bit uh, uh, lame. So maybe we race him a little bit accordingly to how he is. If he's seemed really he trained really sharp, or he's, he felt good warming up, you know, you might race him different than if he's a little bit sore, a little bit lame. So a lot of times knowing your horse, I think, is a big benefit because the top guys just don't have time to be out there warming up all their horses, going the last trips. So there is some benefits to uh, being able to do that. Well, from where you sit as participa participating in training and bringing along these young horses and driving and taking care of them in the injuries and competing at the racetracks with the other drivers and other trainers, in terms of fairness, how fair can you tell the harness racing public that's looking at you right now how fair the game is for them to play? I would think harness racing now is as fair as it's been in a long time. I think with what uh, the Horseman and Management instituted this summer has done a tremendous uh, asset to the industry and the fans as a whole. I think if you just look at the trainer standings, you can see the vast difference in the way it was at Maywood in the spring, and the way it was at Sportsman's this summer. Um, I, but also, on the other hand, anybody that says that there's no cheating or something going on in an industry, I think would be pretty naive to say that. Because it's, no matter what business you're in, if you're dealing with dollars and people, and there's money to be won and money to be lost, whether it's in commodities or the insurance business or doctor's fraud or scams, people are always going to try to find an easier way to make a buck. So I think it's as clean as we've had it in a long time, but we're still working for it. Well, Chicago and Harness Racing congratulates Terry Leonard on just being elected to the Illinois Harness Horsemen's Association Board of Directors, and we really appreciate his candor and the trip out to Harvard, Illinois. Stay tuned. We're going to be handicapping with Mike Paradise right after this. Welcome back, and we're handicapping Wednesday night's card from Maywood Park, not Sportsman's Park, Maywood Park. And again, you know, now I know where Harvard, Illinois is. Yeah. It's, it's far out there. I, you know what I think? I think I need to sit out under the oak trees for we'll a while. Put That's you over maybe there, what I need. Can, they have a pool for horses. Right, you know, be nice. like, just relax out there in Harvard. And then coming up this Friday, it's really exciting because I'm going to Juliet. I'm, going with, with, I'm going with you, yeah. We're going to be at the opening of the Off-Track Betting Parlor in Juliet, Illinois. We're going to do Saturday's show from Juliet on Friday night, like, We'll be there around 10. About 10. 10 to midnight we'll okay. be there, and Mike will be giving out some winners. But he's got some winners for you tonight. And in that first race, in the first half of the Daily Double, they're not winners of a race in a lifetime. But look for Johnny's Dream. Well, I thought the source fits well here. Come out of nine winners of two, and big effort last time. I think the source will win, and I'm going to use a long shot the second race, Grace Yorktown. And we've got a late daily double key in that 10th race, and it's also a trifecta key. They're eight claimers, they're three and four-year-olds. Copper Coin is who Mike is going with. Well, Copper Coin had the eight hole last time. He's out of nine winners of five uh, for 10 claimers. This is an easy condition. Horse moves inside. One Mac is the main foe. 
Okay, in the third race, there are $8,000 claimers. There are fillies and mares that are nominees of $1,500 in the last five starts. Go get them, girls. Um, Hop Toad. Hop Toad will be my kid. I got a long shot for you, too. I'm looking for Hop Toad to go out and grab the lead, but I'm concerned because Dreamy Girl will have the same thing in mind. That could set things up for our Miller Lite long shot, Lake Hills Gold. Going to get the cover she lacked last time. Got a good chance here for trainer Gerald Hansen. Now you just brought up that light long shot because I keep forgetting to tell her. That's everybody. right. <laughs> Hattie D with Dave McGee in that fifth race. Interesting race because the one hot dog casserole and Hattie D both figure to leave. One will have the lead, the other one will have the two holes. So, of course, both of them figure here. Jay Indian Princess will try to come from out of it, but she's been off and I don't know how she's going to handle this track. There are eight claimers in that seventh race and from the rail, Golden Wellwood with Laverne Hostetler. Well, he's not a sound horse, but I'll tell you one thing, he does well, and that's called winning. He came off being lame, won by nine and a half. He's inside, he gets out in time, he's going to be tough to beat. Brian Scott, Yankee Showboat, the two main foes. Okay, and on to the eighth race. It's time for the main event. They're fillies and mares, an invitational handicap. The post positions were drawn by groups, and this is how it came out. Union Silk and Ron Marsh have the rail. Ideal Fresh and Tom Harmer come next. Campanetti with Jim Kern. Warm Mink with Larry Smith. Sand the floor with Dave McGee, and from the outside, Annie Crombie and Tom Simmons. Sand the floor, that's your pick. That's my pick. You know, me from last week. Eleanor, the key of this race will be the first turn, right off the bat. The decision will have to be, what, what is Annie going to do? If she can either leave, try to get to the front end, I think Ideal Fresh is going out, or she can stay behind, try to flush out Sand the floor. I think her best chance is on the front end here, because I think Sand the floor has too strong of a brush. I think Sand the Floor is going to be get second over cover in this race here and simply outbrush this field. Look for Caffinetti also to be charging late. Yeah, but what about the invader here, Warm Mink? She's got to make uh, a believer out of me, Eleanor. These races she won was against Easier Company, and I know that uh, Hazel's slower, but uh, uh, I know she has a lot of wins, but most of those were at the fairs. I think just think she's in too tough. I'm sticking with the Ideal Fresh. Come on, Tom okay. Harmer. And in this ninth race, we have just claimed... But figure her to win right back for a new trainer. It's not the only way to go, the better way to go. Fly first class. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm going to tell you why I like fly first class. We had her last time. She's inside against the horse to beat unnoticed. And if, whether a Nordis leaves or Woodless leaves, fly first class should get the better trip. She always does well at Maywood Park. She's a one-move horse. Daryl busty has got to get her out at the right time. One move at the right time will do it. Woodness. One move at the right time is going to bring woodness, like, right there. Not bad for a price, Chef. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Coming up tomorrow, you want to know what's coming up tomorrow? It's trifecta night. Yes. And the Cardinal Elimination. Eliminations. It's good. Two divisions. Two divisions. And the Star Pointer Series Consolation is tomorrow. Yeah, so Tony tomorrow will be, will be a very, very special day, and you won't want to miss it. And then Friday, again, one more time. Where are we going to be? We'll be at Joliet. Okay. By the way, there's a nice handicap in Maywood Friday yes, night. It's at the Jefferson Park Mall in Joliet. All of our Joliet fans have to come out there and see us. i got to find it first. Okay. So until next time, we'll see you at the races. Good night. Chicago Harness Racing is an exclusive presentation of Pace Setter Productions. Chicago Harness Racing has been brought to you in part by Miller High Life. The best comes shining through. By Errol Chevrolet and Chrysler Plymouth and by the Illinois Department of Agriculture, supporting harness racing throughout the state. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you 